Time went by, and men settled down all over the earth, as if it had always been theirs. And Zeus was pleased with what he saw as he looked down from Olympus, and busied himself, setting the rest of the world to rights, after the desolation made by the Titans. Of course, it was to Greece that he gave most of his attention, though he did not neglect the islands of the Aegean Sea, which separates Greece from Asia Minor, nor that part of the mainland beyond which is called Troy. When he was tired with his labors, Zeus would go southward to the land of the blessed Ethiopians, men of the Silver Age, who had not learnt the wickedness of the Titans, and who often entertained the Immortals at their banquets. But the Evons, which Pandora had let loose from the Golden Casket, found their way surely enough into the hearts of men, and some even in Greece became almost as wicked as those of the Silver Age whom Zeus had destroyed before Prometheus made man as we know him out of clay. Rumors of wickedness beyond belief came to Zeus, and he began to wonder whether he could destroy the people of the Bronze Age and make yet another race of men. But without Prometheus to help him, he hesitated. At last, he decided to see for himself, and so he called to him his son Hermes and said, Let us take upon ourselves the form and likeness of men and go down into the land of Greece and seek entertainment, as if we were poor travelers. And if we find that men are not fit to live upon the beautiful earth, I will destroy them utterly. Hermes, who loved mankind and had helped Prometheus, replied, Father Zeus, let us not be over hasty. If we visit three households and find that two out of the three merit destruction, then let mankind perish. But if we find virtue and kindness, and even two, however wicked the third may be, then spare the good, but bring whatever doom you like upon the wicked.